Aston Villa nil, Man United nil. Does Ten Hag live to see another day? I don't know if he's going to, but all I know is this team. I know for banter. Yesterday I was on radio, I was on Kiss and Classic. Shout out to the boys. Shout out to Nyash, to Bill Mbote, and of course the host Joe Sina for having me uh, on the score and the kickoff. And I was introducing myself every time I'd say, ah, this is Nex from Box to Box, and I'm Ten Hag in every single time. I knew it was a joke. As a neutral, in this particular game, as a neutral and as an Arsenal fan, we want to see Ten Hag stay because of... We, we just want to see United fans suffer, you know? Like, you guys don't realize as Arsenal fans, there was a period where, when I was in school, in high school, these guys went and won three titles in four years, and we had to live through that every day. And they did not accept mediocrity for a second. Yet, Arsenal went from being really good to being really bad during the same time. So, I have received enough um, abuse banter banter abuse in terms of banter um from united fans so we, we really enjoy this we're enjoying your suffering we want to see you suffer completely but also <laughs> um as a host on box to box i have to be objective and i have to address the feelings of the united fan united fans are suffering and in as much as all we're saying ten Hagen, i can see how they're suffering man this team today like i was watching this team and People are just lost. Like, I Rashford, um, Zagzi, who came on and supposed to be a super sub. Like, how are your passes? You can't even make a simple pass. And I think I mentioned it in the post match after the Porto game, after the Tottenham game, that okay, it's 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 once now. Like, he's he's the one guy who I didn't know much about. Then Makumi told me, uh, no, actually, Kure is one who told me during Euros when we we're doing the prep for the Euros and the content for Euros. Like, you need to watch out for this guy. Um, and I, I saw a bit of highlights, but you know, sometimes it's just good to watch these guys play and see them in their element, see what they bring to the table. Because sometimes it's so easy to judge, especially a striker on goals and assists. But if he brings other things to the table, then, you know, it's almost like Jesus. If you just went by goals, goals and assists, you'd just be like, this guy is not a footballer. But um, if you went and saw everything else that he does, okay, not now currently, because he's not playing the best form, but... The reason why he's at the top is he does a lot of things outside, you know, the uh, the normal goals and assists. So I expected to see a lot more from him. Tottenham game, he was a bit off. The passes were not going to fit and stuff like that. I was like, all right, cool. Maybe that's a one-off thing. Today, when he came on, like, no impact. In fact, he was giving the ball away. There's one where the ball was given to him and then he just gives that, like, he does like a touch, a no-look touch, and it goes straight to an Aston Villa player. Um, some would argue that that's a coaching thing because the players, whoever is supporting, didn't know to be there. But at the same time, it has to be him. You need to be aware, special awareness. So I'm getting concerned. I'm still not fully concerned about him, but I'm getting concerned about how he's playing. Marcus Rashford, you are getting into spaces. You're getting in such nice spaces. And then it's that final third ball where you're just failing. And after it failed three or four times, now you resorted to kicking people. You kicked Matikash. You kicked, I don't know who else you kicked. The first one was a yellow card, well-deserved. You are so lucky not to be sent off. And as a player of experience, a player who everyone is relying, uh, the manager is relying upon and the young players are looking up to, you're the one who should be helping to steady the ship during these hard times. Bruno has literally been sent off twice in the last two games for second yellows, while being on a yellow card, being doing, some, doing something stupid. Um... Arsenal, we've had it with Rice and Trossard. So it's first of all, it's a theme that's happening in the in the course of the season, and it's also something that has happened twice in your team in the past six or seven days. You can't, literally, you can't be you can't be kicking people like that. You can't let the pressure get to you. There was two times where he'd get his one on one with Matikash. There's one where he tried doing a through ball. It went straight to I think it was not concert. Concert got an injured. Uh, Diego Carlos, if I'm not wrong. Then the second one, he tries to chip it to uh, Rasmus Hoylund, and the ball just goes straight to the keeper. So once those things happen, he gets frustrated. And now he was just lashing out. And the first yellow card was the yellow card. Well, he didn't get to the, the first foul that led to the yellow card was so dumb because he sprinted from so far. He's run down Matikash, and because of the sprint he has done, he has done a great job because now Cash was attacking, and then he turned back because there's no way he was going. <laughs> Then Rashford just kicks him. Like, you you do all the hard work and then you just kick him. Like, bro, I'm just like, like, yo, I'm not getting. I'm not getting. I get it you're frustrated. I, I really do. But if there's anyone who should know better, it's you. You're the highest paid player of the team. You're one of the most experienced players. 
I don't know if you're the highest paid actually if it's you or Bruno. But anyway, you all Casemiro, it's one of you. Bro, you actually can't. Literally, the next you had to be subbed off. And I totally agree with that sub, right? Because he was taken off for Zaxi. Good kudos to Ten Hag, didn't even waste time. Um, when Anthony came on, he showed more fight than most people on that field, to be fair. Maguire got injured at halftime, but just before halftime, he was taken off. And then we had a Lindelof, Lindelof signing, who came on to play at right back for Mazuri, came on for Mazuri to play at right back, and then the lead came on for Maguire. So obviously, coming on at halftime, just more legs on that side, but the team still just looked, woof, woof. And on top of that, Aston Villa looked like they lacked ideas. Aston Villa looked like a tired team. They look like they're still tired from the Champions League uh, stuff that they did with Bayern. And the only way they were getting up the pitch is because United were fouling them. Literally, United kept fouling them in not too dangerous places, but also not like in their half. It's just like in between the second and the second and final third, which meant there were free kicks where the center backs could come up. So, and that's how Aston Villa were coming forward. But even despite that, Aston Villa didn't have a shot on target in the first half. The first shot on target came in the second half through Yuri Tillemans. I think it was in the second half. And they finished the game with one shot on target. Literally, like that's how the game ended for them. Um, one funny thing about Lindelof, while we were doing the live, we were live on TikTok. What we were doing the live, Keenan was like, uh, I, I, I said I didn't know Lindelof was still in this team. And then he was like, uh, yeah, the man got injured in the transfer market. And just when they closed, the man miraculously recovered. So yeah, shout out to him for recovering miraculously. And then um, another big uh, loss for Aston Villa was Konza. Konza got injured after 10 minutes. And it seems like it was a bad injury. Another groin injury. If you guys watched the Porto game, which we watched on TikTok as well with all the United fans, that was another groin injury that uh, Ramsey went through. So a lot of muscular injuries that the Villa team is going through. Uh, McGinn was already out with a hamstring injury as well. So they're really going through muscular injuries. Again, just the number of sheer number of games that are coming. Also, you can be sure that means they're being drilled in training because that midfield is running. It's running and you're being tested right now. So that is why the likes of Bailey are coming on and they're still getting um, a good number of minutes. But Bailey, it's like now it's like a tailed off a bit. So um, he's always the first person to be subbed off. I don't understand. John Duran came on. Everyone was scared. United fans were scared, including myself. I was a United fan on hire because, again, as I've said, I am now I'm done with the objective. Back to being a hater. <laughs> Um, yeah, as an Arsenal fan, we want to see Ten Hag stay. And the worst part was the fact that the entire board was literally sitting up there. Like, that is that is wild. Um, but yeah, all in all... Um, oh, I need to speak about the Dalo block in the 93rd minute. That was crucial because... Uh, what's this kid's name? I, uh, Philogene was about to score. He had a good chance at the, far, at the far post, tried to call it, and Diego Dalo blocked the shot. Like, that was a really, really good one. Um, and then Cash also had a big block when Ganacho was on the counter. And yeah, that's how the game ended. Uh, there was one big save again at, in the first half. Martinez uh, saving from uh, Rashford's shot after Mati Cash was trying to do a side foot. Uh, like He's trying to pass side foot while facing his own goal and he just passes it to Rashford who just runs all the way and takes a shot and then Martinez saved. That was like in the first six minutes of the game. But yeah, all in all... I, this is not a performance that could save Ten Hag's job. But if they want to keep him, I, I get if they say they're keeping him and let's see. Because they also signed him on a contract extension. They gave him, if they fire him, they have to pay him 17 million. Mind you, United are already on the brink because uh, before the season, uh, before the transfer window ended, FFP was something that was really big on their radar. And they couldn't, like, you know, they can't cross a certain line. And paying 17 million to a manager who's not, not going to manage you is another way that is just going to mess them up. And what they were saying through the Athletic is one of the things they had to do to make sure their finances are in order for sure is to make the Champions League. So, yeah, man, it's tough. It's tough. The one thing I know at least is that if they decide to go with an interim manager in Ruud van Nistelrooy, which is what everyone is saying, I'm sure they will save money because it's already on their books, right? So they don't have to get someone else and then pay them there and then. But they have to figure it out. They have to figure it out. Because this team, I don't know. This team is is in the pits. Yeah, Aston Villa nil, United nil. That's how it ends.